Hey guys, John here. How does stalking behavior cross the line from obsession to murder? And how does stalking even come to be? Stalkers have different reasons for their behavior, but some common factors are lust, obsession, and control. Lustful stalkers are serial predators who stalk victim after victim, often targeting sex workers whom they perceive as vulnerable, available, or deserving of punishment. They may have fantasies of sexual assault, violence, or domination, and use stalking to plan and execute their attacks. They may also have a distorted sense of entitlement, a lack of empathy, or a thrill-seeking personality. Obsessive stalkers develop an unhealthy fixation on a specific person, usually someone they have met or seen before, and try to pursue a romantic or sexual relationship with them, despite being rejected or ignored. They may have low self-esteem, poor social skills, or personality disorders, and use stalking to cope with their loneliness, insecurity, or rejection. They may also have a delusional belief that the person loves them back, a narcissistic need for attention, or a jealous and possessive attitude. Controlling stalkers are motivated by the desire to exert power and influence over another person, and to make them feel afraid, dependent, or submissive. They may have a history of abuse, trauma, or violence, and use stalking to express their anger, resentment, or revenge. They may also have a paranoid or antisocial personality, a sense of superiority, or a sadistic pleasure in causing pain. In this video, we will talk about a true stalker, a walking nightmare who became all but too real. This is the story of the San Antonio Strangler, Johnny Avalos, Serial Killer Documentary, Episode 3. Johnny was born in the impoverished south side of San Antonio, Texas on December 1, 1986. He lived a solitary existence, never marrying, and struggled with an intellectual disability. His run-ins with the law were not uncommon, as he faced multiple arrests in Bexar County for making terroristic threats, resisting arrest, criminal mischief, and possession of controlled substances. By day, Johnny worked as a dishwasher in a restaurant near downtown, but it was after dark that his true nature emerged. With a disturbing pattern of stalking women, particularly sex workers, Johnny's actions cast a deadly shadow over the city of San Antonio, Texas, a shadow that tore apart five families and friends over the course of three years. Natalie Chavez had a difficult life. She grew up with her grandmother in Sioux City, Iowa, until she moved to San Antonio, Texas in 2012 to live with her mother Kimberly Morales and stepfather Carlos Johnson when she was 13 years old. By 2014, life at her parents seemed too difficult for her to handle, leading her to quit school and run away from home often, something that made her want to move back to Sioux City with her grandmother for the holidays. Natalie was adventurous and rebellious. She had many friends, but some of them were bad influences who pushed her to do things she would later regret. But she wasn't a bad child. She was a good friend and a good daughter, who loved socializing and making friends, aspiring to be a teacher when she grew older. She had a beautiful smile, a kind heart, and a joyful, fun spirit that would make anyone laugh. During the final months when Natalie was missing, her mother and stepfather failed to report her disappearance. This omission eventually left her feeling isolated and frightened, especially considering her recent painful breakup with her boyfriend, who had been involved in some shady activities. His family blamed her for tipping off the police, which led them to harass her online with hateful and hurtful messages. She desperately tried to contact her mother many times, begging for help and a chance to reconcile, but her mother ignored her pleas. On the night of December 17th of 2014, she texted her parents one last time, telling them that she loved them and wanted to come home. But they ignored her pleas once more, not knowing that it would be the last time they would hear from their daughter ever again. A decision her stepfather later stated he would regret for the rest of his life. The very next day, on the morning of December 18, 2014, police were called to a creek in Vera Cruz, Texas around 10 a.m. after a passerby reported seeing the body of a young woman under a bridge near the intersection of Vera Cruz and Nueva Leon Street with no clothes on. That young woman was 15-year-old Natalie Chavez, the police report said that her body showed signs of a struggle with severe trauma on her legs. Later, when the autopsy was done, 
it was determined that she had been sexually assaulted and strangled to death. As Natalie's family and friends sought help from the community, the San Antonio police worked tirelessly to find her killer. It wasn't until four months later, on April 15, 2015, when DNA came back and identified Johnny Avalos as their suspect. He was quickly apprehended for sexual assault charges, and during the interrogation, he claimed that he had sex with Natalie for a predetermined amount of money, and that he was not aware of Chavez's age. However, his sex for money claim was unsubstantiated, and he later admitted to knowing that she was only 15. As the police gathered more proof against him, Avalos faced the charge of capital murder, which could result in the death penalty. A Trail of Bodies As Johnny Avalos sat in jail for the murder and sexual assault of Natalie Chavez, DNA evidence connected him to three more murders. Detectives were surprised by the results, as they did not suspect a serial killer was behind the crimes at the time. On the morning of Monday, the 12th of January, 2015, a body was discovered on the roadside in the 2100 block of San Fernando Street, a passerby who saw a strange bundle in a sheet called the police. The report said the caller was worried it might be a dog or a human. When the investigators arrived, they found out it was a woman's body on the sheet, tied shut. This woman was 28-year-old Rosemary Perez. The coroner later reported that Rosemary died of asphyxiation due to a plastic bag used over her head and that she also had signs of sexual assault. Only five days later, on March 17, 2015, a woman was found in an alleyway of the 100 block of Avondale by a man cutting his grass. She was naked from the waist down, brutally beaten, and left for dead. This woman was 49-year-old Genevieve Ramirez. A neighbor who witnessed the scene when the police arrived stated that he noticed the ambulances speeding down his street and went to see what was going on. He said that he saw the victim lying in the alley, barely alive. He continued to describe that she was covered in blood and had severe injuries on her face and body, that she looked terrible, her eyes were swollen, and her face was dark red. She didn't look like herself anymore, stating that her eyes were open, but she was not breathing well, and that she was not responding to anything. Later, Genevieve's sister reported she spent a few weeks in a coma at San Antonio Medical Center before being transferred to a nursing facility, where she sadly passed away. On April 15th, another woman's body was discovered on South Presa Street, where they found Rosemary Perez's body. This woman was 29-year-old Celia Lopez, who had been missing for a while. Her family and friends reported her disappearance, and a friend said she last saw her getting in a car with a man the night before she vanished. A person walking by the bridge noticed her body and contacted the police. The police later said she had been dead for a few days. Her body showed obvious signs of trauma, and she had been sexually assaulted and strangled with a plastic bag. In the meantime, Johnny Avalos was behind bars since April 15th of 2015 for the sexual assault and murder of Natalie Chavez, but he still had a few tricks up his sleeve. He was already linked to three other brutal sexual assaults, those of Rosemary Lopez, Genevieve Ramirez, and Celia Lopez, thanks to DNA testing ordered by the municipal court. But he had a secret that he was hiding from detectives, a secret that would add more shock to his horrible crimes. He claimed he had more victims, but he wanted a price for his confessions. A Texas news station had contacted him for an exclusive interview, and Johnny thought he could take advantage of this situation by demanding money in exchange for his revelations. The reporter refused, again and again, a total of 22 times in under nine minutes. But Johnny, without remorse and an arrogant attitude, laughing and smirking at any statement or question directed at him, couldn't remain silent. He spilled his secret, nonetheless. Johnny revealed that he had stalked over 20 women, all of whom, by his account, had escaped from him before he could take their lives. And then, chillingly, he proceeded to confess to the murder of Vanessa Lopez, a 25-year-old mother of three, whose body was found floating in the San Antonio River near Espada Dam, back on October 28, 2012. A cold case that remained unsolved for four long years. A kayaker had spotted her corpse and alerted the police but no one ever knew who killed her, until now. The trial of Johnny Avalos was a lengthy one, spanning four years as the court and prosecutors meticulously deliberated. The complexity arose from Johnny's evaluation by multiple doctors, 
who unanimously confirmed his intellectual disability. They assessed him as having the mentality of a juvenile and an IQ of 70. Despite this, one of the prosecutors vividly described the depth of Johnny's malevolence. According to their account, Johnny would stalk the streets of the west side and south side of San Antonio, Texas, acting in isolation and preying mostly on sex workers. His gruesome acts involved strangling his victims with his arms or a plastic bag to later engage in disturbing acts with their lifeless bodies, adding that some of his victims were found not far from where he lived on Warmond Court. The trial brought to light the chilling reality of Johnny Avalos's actions, leaving a lasting impact on everyone involved. On November 29, 2016, Johnny faced indictment on capital murder charges. However, due to his intellectual disability, he was deemed ineligible for the death penalty. In 2019, now 32 years old, he chose to plead guilty to the charges, resulting in two concurrent life sentences without the possibility of parole. As part of his plea agreement, he openly admitted his guilt in all five murders. For the families of the victims, this verdict finally brought a sense of closure after enduring years of waiting for justice. They found solace in knowing that Johnny would remain incarcerated for the remainder of his life. As for now, Johnny Avalos is currently serving his sentence at the Preston E. Smith unit in La Mesa, Texas. And regardless of his circumstances, he continues to harbor an unwavering determination to fight for his freedom at every opportunity he gets. If you or someone you care about is experiencing stalking, Please consider the following steps to ensure safety. Prioritize your well-being. Acknowledge that your safety matters. Avoid any communication with the stalker. Clearly express that their attention is unwanted, and then disengage from further interaction. Lean on your support system. Reach out to friends, family, or authorities. Let them know about the situation. Having a support network during these challenging times is crucial. Take practical measures. Protect yourself by securing your home with alarms, video doorbells, and sturdy locks. When driving, choose well-lit and populated areas. Document everything. Keep a detailed record of incidents related to stalking. Note down dates, times, locations, and descriptions. This information may be critical evidence if legal action becomes necessary. Remember your safety comes first. Trust your instincts. Seek professional help if needed. Remember you are not alone, even if it feels like it. There will always be people who care about your well-being. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more serial true crime stories just like this.